All right, you all have been asking, and it is time to deliver. You know what we're in? Yep, the little rabbit. Let's get back on this thing, and let's go ahead and just get this truck wrapped up. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm pumped and ready to get this thing moving. It's been sitting here in the driveway, been waiting on parts, but we've got them in, and it's time to get going. Oh yeah, I'm ready to be behind this wheel. All right, let's start with up under that engine bay. I've got a timing belt, a water pump, a few other bits. Let's get up under there and get going. All right, what we got here? Valve cover gasket. New thermostat. Somewhere there's a gasket for that. Yes, it had a newer water pump. Might as well go ahead and stick another new one in there. Got a Gates timing belt. Now, it's not a Continental, but I've had pretty good luck with these. They've done quite well. This is a full kit with the tensioner and the belt. And what is this? What is this? What about y'all? I'm excited about these and I hope you guys are too once you see them. It is yet. Oh, the box is kind of falling apart. Oh yeah. There we go. It's a Solo Works S1 coil over. And these are a little bent up, I guess, from packaging. No biggie. I am ready to get those stuck on the truck. I don't know about y'all. Comes with some lubricant and a sticker and some directions. Some spanners. All right. All right. First thing we need to do is get this thing jacked up so we can get the wheel off and get up in here. And then we'll go ahead and pull the air conditioner belt, which also runs the water pump. And then we'll pull the alternator belt. And that'll give us access to go ahead and start pulling that pulley. And then once we pull the, this is the dampener, the harmonic balancer pulley. And then we'll pull the cover from down here and have full access to get that belt off. So first what I like to do is take the alternator loose and kick it back so you can get down to the air conditioner compressor and then there's two bolts in there, two nuts that you need to take loose on that bracket to allow it to swing down and then you get its belt off first and then the alternator belt. Now since this is all hacked up and I need to mess with the wiring anyways we might as well go through and clean that alternator up. Let's go ahead and just pull it. You've got the one nut here for the adjuster. And then you've got an Allen down there with a nut on this back side. Let's go ahead and pop that off real quick.
Alright, that one's just stuck really hard on the dowel. From If you've owned one of these, you know these alternators just constantly come loose. That's why most of the time they'll be real pride <laughs> right here. And so what's happened is just been tightened and tightened and tightened and tightened. And it's just pushed that dowel real hard into the alternator, which is now off. Alright, now we can go ahead and get the AC compressor loose. It's going to be a 14 mil. And of course, I'll have to get a wrench on the other side, and that looks like a 15. Okay, just kidding, it might be a 17. That's her tush, it's a 17. I'm just going to say one reason I really liked the AC Delete on my other truck is the bracket for the alternator has a tooth adjuster. So instead of just having to pry it, <laughs> there's actually teeth on it that allow you to adjust what you need to there. Alright, now that we got all the... the V belts off. Let's go ahead and take these four Allens out. Uh, they're six millimeters, and then we'll pop this pulley off so we can get access to the belt cover. And you do have a dowel here when you go to put it back on to line everything up. Let's see. Now we've got a 10 here, an Allen here, there's an Allen up here. Oh, I guess I already took that one off or what on there. Let's go ahead and pull the pulley off of the water pump real quick. our cover all right now that we have everything off down there it's time to get access to our final timing mark which is going to be your camshaft timing and what you have here is a flat that you stick a there's a special tool for it also use little pieces of aluminum I'll show you here in a second sometimes I've used a file in the past obviously done this a few times on these cars but you've got eight 10, 10 millimeter nuts all the way around and watch out these little brackets they're kind of tension loaded they may try to pop off um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. We'll pop that off. This will also give us idea, an idea of the internals on this engine. So let's go and ring this off real quick. Alright, and as to be expected, I just want to show you guys, this engine literally looks brand new on the inside. Very nice to see, you know, with the with what I feel like the mileage is on this truck. That helps me 
keep considering that because I mean the cams look awesome the aluminum is not stained I mean this thing looks incredible on the inside but let's go ahead and get our marks lined up and put our tools in what we'll do here you've got a little hole and we'll find it here in a second and I take a bolt and stick it in there to hold your timing just about where it needs to be there then you've got a mark right here and you'll see a little notch on the back of your kit your uh, pump gear there and then obviously your intermediate shaft there's no gear or anything so you don't have to worry about anything on it and then we just need to set our timing for the crank so let's go ahead and grab a socket so we can spin this thing around easily set our timing and then pull our tensioner loose all right so we've got this flat lined up we have our number one cylinder on a compression stroke top dead center your compression stroke is when both lobes of your cam are up having your valves closed and then our timing mark for the pump is lined up I think I don't know if you can see it see your little timing mark there on the gear in there and then under here you have these straight up and down with that bolt hole and this little nub here and then you want this little guy here to your bottom left and then we go ahead and take our tensioner off and pop it off of there And that's a 14 millimeter. Maybe. Just kidding. It's a 15. Oh. Trying to break the grill. Nice and tight. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention and do it. There's a little hole right here you can stick a bolt through let's do that really quick because what will happen there is depending on where you're at on your cam it'll kick this gear back so you just want that there to be sure that it stays close There's your old belt out, which honestly <laughs> really doesn't look bad, but I've seen these look brand new in the past and break, so never want to take a chance with the timing belt, especially with a non-interference engine. And then, yep, sure enough, we're going to have to throw a jack under the motor and jack the motor up a little bit. It is not going to le let me have it without taking that motor mount loose. I was afraid of that. Oh, wheel. That's a 13 or 14 millimeter. Let's go grab a socket really quick. See if we can get that loose.
Uh huh. Um, Charlie and me have bumped your head, head, so I need you to come in now. Okay, I'll be right there, honey. All right, we have success. Oh well, I lied. See that down in there? What a pain in the butt. There we go. Let's jack it up a little bit more. Now we can go ahead and put the motor on up. Plenty of room to pop that off. Throw that on the ground. Grab your new one. Now this is a different style. This is the inside. That right there is the outside. Slide that back on. Washer and nut. All right, I'm going to go ahead and lift this back down, get our motor mount bolt back in, throw the belt on. Let's check all our marks, and I'll catch you guys in just a second. All right, our mark there, here, and down here, our line back up. I've gone ahead and snugged up our tensioner using mm-hmm oh I dropped it yeah. oh our little tensioner tool there and then once I did all that we spun the engine around I spun the engine around two or three revolutions just to make sure we had no contact with anything then we reset our timing and made sure everything lined up and it does so we should be good to go there what I'm going to do now, we're going to clean up our surfaces here. Go ahead and get the new gasket on, wherever it is. <laughs> I like to use a little bit of RV, RTV in the corners, just because you don't get the most perfect seal in there. Uh, we just want to be make sure everything seals pretty good and all. And then we'll go ahead and drop our valve cover back on there. And because it is so dark and late, I will catch you guys tomorrow. All right, y'all, so went ahead and wrapped everything up under here. Got our valve cover back on, timing belt on and tight. Went ahead and did replace that Fram filter, a few, few of you suggested that. Put a MAL filter on there, very good quality filter. Stuck everything back on there for now. Obviously don't have the timing, the alternator on here just yet, but you can run these without an alternator. But for today, well, today, yeah. For now, I'm really excited. And coilovers. We're going to put some coilovers on this thing. Let's get these old ones pulled off. I want to clean that wheel well out. Maybe take it and hit it with some paint or some utter coating. Make it look really good in there. Clean up what we have in there and get these coilovers on. And then I have a surprise for you guys with the wheels. Alright, so to begin with, let's get the old coilover out. You've got two 13 millimeter nuts and washers on the top hat here. And then you go underneath, whoop, and you've got a 17 millimeter bolt with a nut on it. Now these are obviously, if you were just putting a factory strut on it, these have adjustments. It's got a washer with a little bit of an egg on it so you can adjust your camber in and out. But with putting new coilovers, we're pretty much gonna have to put them on there, see how they look, and then in the near future, when we can, we're gonna get it aligned. We may may try to do it ourselves, but go ahead and pull your brake line out of the way there. This one's not the greatest shape, but it's not terrible, honestly. Definitely something I do want to replace here in the short future in the near future. You know, brakes are safety first. This thing can die on you and that would really stink, but if you're going down a hill or something, you don't stop, you're you're really screwed. So <laughs> Let's be sure we get that taken care of. But let's go ahead and pop that cool that strut off so we can put a coil over on it.
There we go. All right, now we got it all cleaned out in there. Got that shred out of there. Let's grab our pressure washer, blast that in there clean, and see if we can get a coat of something on it. Oh, I might be out of gas. Whoops. Oh, hey. There's no gas in there. Well, as you saw, something's in that main jet. Small engines for you. But I'm pretty happy with how the wheel well came out. I think it'll look really good, even without anything on it. I'll show it to you guys and see what y'all think. All right, so I've gone ahead, very carefully, off camera, using the proper tools, you know, your spring clamps, and an impact, removed our top cap here, which is your little bearing bushing for the top, and it honestly seems to be in pretty good shape. So we're gonna reuse it. And you take your coil over, leave this top hat here, slide that down there, thumb the nut on, using the six millimeter Allen and a seven eighths, or whatever the metric close size of that is. This fits on here pretty snug. Wrench, I am going to tighten that down. This is where your old school curved double box, you know, boxed in wrenches come in handy. These old funky wrenches come in handy sometimes. Because otherwise in the past I've used a socket with a pair of vice grips on it to tighten this down. This is a nylon lock nut, so it doesn't have to be ridiculously tight. All right. There we go. Let's slap that on the truck, and then we can start messing with our height adjustment. Now, this is obviously, you know, I'd say a pretty decent quality coilover, especially for a rabbit, but this doesn't have your preload adjustment or anything or I don't know whatever vice versa yeah you just set your height with this thing hopefully a couple weeks or months we'll have to made it Oh yeah. I'm not I know what I'm gonna do. What kind of tomatoes are you doing? Better boys. I'm thinking about going buying a Tommy toe. Rosie didn't love Tommy toes, already why I quit doing Tommy toes. Dude, I was producing them by the hundreds one time. <laughs> 
Chad didn't look over here, man. He was, he, he came over and get my hand full. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with him. I love some tomatoes. Right now, for the time being, we're just full camber. Got our adjustment maxed out. Snug it up. Now, while we have the wheel off still, I'm gonna get Dad to jump up in the truck when he gets here. Should be here in a few minutes. Pump the brakes up. Let's breed the, bleed the son of a hooter right here. Capillar. See if we get some fluid running through it. Make sure that brake's working okay. And then we'll show you guys the wheels. Pump it up. Oh, yummy. Alright. Alright, so we're going to stick with the other the, the wheels that we had put on there before, but we're going to do something a little different with them. I think you guys will like it. Alright, so we're going to wrap them in this Federal Super Steel 595. You can buy these in the nice small, in the smaller sizes. They're pretty cheap. We went ahead and went a little beefier. Uh, not going to try to stretch anything or make it look goofier. I, I want this truck to ride good and look good. And I think this will be a nice meaty tire. They ride really good. This is what we're running on the MG, and it does quite well. So don't really want to run around right now. Go to the tire shop if it's open at all. So we're going to attempt to put the tires on ourselves. We're going to give it a try real quick and then show you guys what we have in mind with them. All right, so we got our wheel down here on some cardboard. Got some off-brand window cleaner Windex. And what we're going to do is take our tire. Now this is obviously, these are directionals. And this is for our passenger side. So from the outside, we want it to face that direction. So what we're going to do first, soak this thing down. Maybe. Yeah, good enough. We're going to slap it on there. See how this works. <laughs> Didn't we have to pick it up a little bit? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Two shares. We're closed. But... No, we did do this. Did it? See? You sure? You sure? Try this thing over, nothing too sharp or anything. Alright, let's get the air compressor. I think with enough air, this thing should pop on here. Get some air in her. It's always the fun part. <laughs> Any day now. I don't have that much in there yet. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's wipe this down. And once again, I'm gonna tell you one more, or 6,000 more times, show you what we're gonna do with it. All right, so we have the beauty rings off of the little Toyota. I've gotten rid of the wheels that were on it, and I've got a plan for new wheels. So don't need them, but I wanna use them on this. Now the issue that I had, putting them on here, is this, the lips look awesome, I feel like. It's a full lip, you know, these are really hard to come by. I hate to do anything to them, but I, I think it'll come out pretty good. Now, because this inner ring is a little too tight for this, what I have to do is I'm gonna take my side grinder and cut a couple little notches in it before tapping it in here, just to give it a little bit of, you know, leeway to be able to slide on there. Let's do that real quick. You prepared? Let's do this. All right, so what I've done is pulled the original clips off of the old wheels, and then we're going to measure out and drill right here a 3 8 hole. Now, originally it was about a 7 16 or an 11 millimeter, but we're going to be doing a 3 8 because it actually fits pretty well and it holds, really, holds, it seems to hold it really snug in there once we put it on there. So let's go ahead and measure it out really quick and drill it out. Scribe, excuse me, scribing it out with this caliper there. Taking my punch, centering it up. As you can see there, and then let me go get it. Oh. We pop our hubcap on, and now tell me what you guys think. We have a you know virtually worthless pair of wheels that I had left over. Pretty cheap tires, 226 bucks for a set of four. Leftover beauty rings, our factory hubcaps and clips. And so we're pretty much in these for a little over 200, the cost of tires. And I think they look pretty good and they look fairly factory, except you've got a better tire size. That's how you do stuff on a budget. What do you guys think? Now, let's see how this Hobbin Fluber looks on the truck. Coil overs. Let it down slowly. Still has my jack. <laughs> Might be a little too low. Gotta start somewhere. Gotta start somewhere. Let's go ahead and jack the other side up. Do the same process. Oh, I need this. Oh, but it's probably too low. Oh, but it looks good. Ah. All right, we're going to raise it up a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe not. How's our clearance look? Oh, there's tons of room under there. At least three inches. 
Oh, what do we do? We need to lower the back before we decide anything drastic, like raising it. What do you guys think about this? I guess it's hard to see with it monster trucked out in the rear there. We need to mess with jacking it up and doing an axle flip. What y'all think? All right, y'all, so we took it for a quick spin down the road. Got a little bit of rubbing up front, and we're dragging mud flaps. But as you can see, we still need to bring it back up a little bit. I'm gonna try to adjust that camber some. I've got it all the way at the, the adjustments all the way at the time being. May end up having to put a little bit of a shim or a spacer in there to kick it out some. But we'll do some adjustments there. But I think that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. Still a ton more to go. We've got a ton more going already. Next time we're gonna, we're gonna get started on that axle flip. What sucks right now, it's so hard to get parts and it's kind of hard to get the U-bolts that we need for that rear axle flip. We wanna get some larger, longer U-bolts that we can use on that rear. But if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe button, notification bell. We're gonna to continue to bring these cars out of the woods, out of the junkyard, out of barns, and bring them back to life. We're having such a great time. And we hope you guys are too. Hope everybody's staying safe and healthy out there. It's crazy right, th right now. Hopefully soon we'll be over it. Once again, peace out. Catch y'all on the flip side.